Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to leave you inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I'm going to discuss the importance of failure. Yes, failure. The truth is you're not trying hard enough to succeed if you're not receiving rejection or failure consistently. When we truly put ourselves out there, hustle, and really chase our dreams, failure and rejection is inevitable. It's a tough pill to swallow at first, of course, but all failure really means is that you are giving it your all and really trying. Why is failure important? Because failure teaches us grit, perseverance, determination, and patience. It forces us to dig deep within, to find strength to persevere when times get tough, to keep going, and to never quit. These characteristics are truly what makes the mindset of a winner. And without failure, you would never learn these valuable and important lessons. So often we give up and stop trying as soon as we experience any sort of failure. But the difference between someone who succeeds and someone who fails is learning to use failure to motivate you rather than discourage you. By staying the course, our failures slowly become victories because we chose to continue working hard regardless of the setbacks. Remember, the words no simply mean next opportunity. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, what can people expect when they're buying their first home? Condos downtown are going super duper fast. Right now, the real estate market in Toronto is extremely expensive. You have to start small, right? natural sweetener flavor all 20 flavors to choose from the perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweetness flavor all by greenish flavor all from greenish now available at rexall pharmacies what does luxury mean to you luxury in india i discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world and it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours. All the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. Next up on the show, we have real estate agent Daniela Dalturza, who's going to share her knowledge on how millennials can prepare to buy investment properties at affordable rates. Joining us now is Daniela Dalturza, who's actually a very good friend of mine. So thank you for being on the show, Daniela. Thank you so much for having me. So Daniela, right now, the real estate market in Toronto is extremely expensive, mm -hmm. making it almost impossible for millennials, immigrants, anyone to purchase properties. The average cost of a house is between 700,000 and a million dollars. So what advice do you have for people that want to purchase properties and want to get ahead? Save, save, save. <laughs> Uh, well, obviously, it's a it's a tricky question because, of course, there are some people that just simply don't have enough money to get into the market. Uh, but those that do or are interested into, in, in purchasing and owning, um, you have to start small, right? Uh, people don't have the money, the funds to buy a seven hundred thousand dollar property with a mortgage of let's say three to four thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. and on an income of you know fifty thousand dollars and that's which that's the average income um, yeah. an individual makes right mm -hmm. now in the GTA is fifty thousand which is next to impossible to afford afford housing mm -hmm. um, my advice is you know there's a lot of people individuals who are looking to to start somewhere so get in get in whether you have to save some money for a down payment whether you have to use your RRSPs whether you have to get help from your parents whatever it is you need that down payment start small get a small condo um, one bedrooms or it's pretty tough they're going really fast in yeah. the GTA and um, 
but you know you get into the market that way and you're in you're in it for the long haul and you have a place getting into the market of course it's not easy mm -hmm. but you have to be determined and you have to know that this is what you want yeah um, it's better to be in the market than not to be in the market so I think if any chance that you have mm -hmm. get in um, Mm -hmm. Condos downtown are going super duper fast. I mean, we're making offers and the next day, you know, the condo is getting sold. The mm -hmm. average the average time on the market is about, you know, 10 to 15 days for condos of 500 to 7,000, mm -hmm. um, which is ridiculously crazy. Right now, the market is big again and um, lots, lots of inventory and lots of buyers. Everybody's eager. People are getting upset. So yeah. you have to be ready for it. It's a game that you have to be able to play. Yeah. Um, of course, I myself living in Simcoe County um, can say that there is a lot of available property that is lower, lower in cost um, in the Simcoe County. Uh, starting from Bradford to all the way to Aurelia, of course, all those working in Toronto may have difficulty commuting. Uh, but starting somewhere a little bit closer, Bradford per se, um, it doesn't have to be in the north. I'm speaking for the north because that's where I'm at. But even the east, even the west, there are communities all around the GTA that are much cheaper and you can actually afford a home. Some do not have condos, so you have to be looking at townhomes. But you can get a townhome, even a detached, at the same price mm -hmm. as a small one-bedroom condo in Toronto. Yeah. So I find that working with buyers often, you do get a lot of... Um, a lot of um, inquiry into going elsewhere after mm -hmm. they realize that they simply cannot get into the market in Toronto. Yeah, and what kind of salary to sh uh, should someone be earning before they even think of buying a property? Because mm -hmm. as you said, the average cost is around, or the average salary is around $50,000. Yeah. So what kind of salary should someone have to even <sighs> think about buying a property. Yeah, so that's 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 a that's a hard question to answer because there are those that believe it or not have a very small salary but they have very little expenses. Yeah. So they don't have credit cards and they've saved up money and I meet a lot of first-time buyers who are on small salaries but let's say a boyfriend or girlfriend together joined up 50 mm -hmm. plus 50 is 100. Yeah. It becomes a good salary and they tend to go for cheaper homes and um, cheaper homes anywhere between three to five hundred thousand. Yes, they do exist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Contact me if you you know if you want to know more about these areas. Uh, there are homes that are affordable, affordable, and um, of course you know you could be making two hundred thousand and not know how to save money or not be ready to get into the market because you can't maintain uh, a mortgage payment mm -hmm. of whatever it is a month, mm -hmm. right? You have to be you have to be determined. For sure. Um, so that's a very, you know, it's a it's a great question, but there is no right answer to it. Um, the mortgage brokers will be able to tell you. They will add up your numbers and be able to tell you if it is in fact for you or not, right? So I know you work a lot with first-time homeowners. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us about that experience. What can people expect when they're buying their first home? Uh, so with first-time home buyers, it's um, it's always interesting because you never know what you're in for. There are some. Uh, that the, that are older, uh, they're first time home buyers, but they know exactly what they want, mm -hmm. and they kind of, you know, you show them a few properties, and they say no, 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 yes, done. Yeah. <laughs> and then there are those which would represent 90% of the first time home buyers who um, are pretty delusional on their expectations, and it takes them um, a lot of homes to realize, and sometimes even a loss at an offer to realize what they exactly they want and what they can afford. Yeah. Um, a lot of first time home buyers have trigger fear. I find that when they're placing an offer or when they're liking a property, they're starting to to find every reason in the book to talk themselves out of it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's not fenced properly, whether it's not facing the direction, they're thinking about variables that even experienced homeowners do not encounter. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, you know, if you're asking what my advice is, you know, with homeowners, uh, first time home buyers, don't have that trigger fear. Know what you want. Do your research ahead of time. Figure out where you want to be because the area is the most important factor. If you know where you want to be, then you know what you're going to get from it and what what to look for. So yeah. you're not jumping around from one to another. There are people that seriously can go <laughs> four yeah. hour difference and, and drives determining where they want to be because they're not certain. 
So do your research. Make sure you know where you want to be and why you want to be there. So that makes it easier for you to make that decision because when, it, when the time comes, you have to be ready to play the game. Just because it's not a multiple offer market, multiple offer scenario, let's say, doesn't mean that you're not going to have um, a lot of obstacles in your way when making an offer mm -hmm. and better yet, firming up that offer and buying that actual first home. Yep. So be ready and, you know, put put uh, put all your research into it beforehand and you'll you'll be fine. I know you mentioned Simcoe County mm -hmm. uh, was affordable. Mm -hmm. I know the Barry area as well. Mm -hmm. What other places in the GTA can people invest in that's mm -hmm. affordable and um, so again, um, my my when you're talking about investments, my advice is always to start small, right? So yeah. condos are a great place of investment because they have a high turnover rate, especially the smaller condos, right? So you can rent them out, um, you can use them for retirement. It's it's always a great investment to start anywhere in Toronto, absolutely anywhere because every area, even the once a day known to be bad area and the city is now is now developing to be good because mm -hmm. they are they are reestablishing every neighborhood and trying to make it a positive one right mm -hmm. so people can live and buy homes and not be afraid to live in a certain area um, so of course there is outside the GTA like you know there's Milton there's the east side there's the west side there's the north there are so many areas that you can invest in but in the end the prices are still pretty high mm -hmm. you're looking at oakville and the oakville prices are getting to be really comparable to toronto now so is wow. it a good investment possibly if you need to be in that area mm -hmm. um milton hamilton you know great universities once again lots of people want to be there but the prices are not low yeah you know condo prices are very comparable you mentioned barry so barry yes it's a great place because barry has um a very high, a very high um, demanding rental market, making it um, easier to purchase because the prices are low, but the rent is high. So that's mm -hmm. a great investment. Wherever you can buy lower and rent for higher, that's great. Then there are towns that are opposite. You know, the south or the more south you go, and the closer you get to the GTA, mm -hmm. the more expensive it is to buy, but not necessarily it is to rent out. Mm -hmm. So you might be looking at the same rental factors and costs in Newmarket and Aurora in comparison to Barrie, but yeah. the price and the purchase price will be $200,000 less. So all those aspects are very important to consider when you're looking into investment properties. So yes, Barrie is absolutely great. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, it's it's a, it's an urban city now too. So there's a lot of opportunity in Barrie and it is really close to Toronto. It's a 50 minute drive. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about saving. Do you have any advice for people out there that are struggling with saving to buy a property? Yes, savings, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very uh, challenging advice to give anybody because I myself love to spend money. Everybody loves to spend money and I think the more you make, the more you become... The more you like to spend. The more you like to spend, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's always tricky. It's always tricky to know what is a must and what is a want. And you yeah. have to be able to try to establish those. <laughs> I think... Um, Figuring out, I mean, food, of course, food is priority, but do we eat organic? Do we, you know, do That's we true. eat out or do we cook inside? All those things matter a lot. So if you're a saver, you know how to save. And those people, they will not blow up their credit cards. They will, you know, pay everything back in full. And if they do have lines of credit or whatever they're using, they're very careful of what they use it for, for emergency, like dental surgery, of course, those are needs. And then there's those wants. So you have to figure out what kind of person you are. If you want to own and you want to be successful in investing, you cannot be a spender because you're not going to be successful in investing and blowing all your money mm -hmm. <laughs> unless you get lucky. And there are those that get lucky. They invest, they get great you know, profit from it. But not everyone's so lucky because we can never predict what's going to happen with the market. Mm -hmm. So... So Daniela, you owned a property at Young and Shepherd as well. Now you have a new property as well in Innisville. So how did you prepare for that to buy properties? Um, so for me, I have to admit, I was very fortunate that my parents did help us out with a, a down payment. Um, that was the big. That was a big thing. And also, we got into the market at the right time. So we owned a property. Our first property was at Young and Shepherd. It was a. It was a. 
a bigger property in the penthouse, which uh, didn't last long because I myself couldn't picture myself. I, I didn't find it amusing living on the high floor and constantly observing planes versus being you know, closer to the ground. So we sold and we got pretty good money from that, uh, leading to another purchase mm -hmm. and then leading to another purchase and then finally realizing that all those purchases were very expensive and very small yeah. <laughs> because we then had three kids to accommodate and we needed a house. So we had to pull whatever we could. Um, at that time I had a property joint with my dad, so we had to split the funds and um, go our separate ways, which ended up great because I got into the market in Ennisville. I consider getting into the market at the right time because mm -hmm. we paid a pretty good uh, fair amount for our four bedroom home. And it is my first home, so it was a big difference. It was definitely something new, <laughs> uh, but I love it. I love it. And it's a totally different feeling owning your own home and being able to park <laughs> in your driveway and not have to go downstairs mm -hmm. and, you know, having a backyard that you could let your kids play in or your pets. I, I, I think uh, it really taught me to appreciate the value of owning your own home much more than I've ever appreciated owning a property before. Mm -hmm. um, and would you advise people to make that jump to move to other parts of the GTA yeah. or Innisville or Barrie? Would you advise them to do that since Toronto is so saturated and expensive, the market? So absolutely. I think people are really afraid of what they don't know. They feel that it's much further than it actually is. I mean, yeah. I live in Innisfil, but I drive and commute to Toronto at least a few times a week for work. Mm -hmm. My husband works in Brampton and he is constantly commuting every single day. It's not fun, but I could tell you even living at Young and Shepherd, commuting to downtown Toronto was a commute. Mm -hmm. And it's not any less, right? It's stuck in traffic or being stuck in the 400 or the 404. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to pick your battles and um, if you can afford it in the in the heart of Toronto, go ahead, but not many can. So if you can't afford it, then definitely consider going to the outskirts. You will not be disappointed. It's a different lifestyle, but you could still have the best of both worlds. Yeah, and for someone that's looking to buy an investment property or just a property in general, what kind of steps should they take to do their research and kind of figure out the areas that they want to move in? Uh, well, primarily you have to, if you have children, then you're going to be researching schools, you're going to be yeah. researching uh, neighborhoods and, you know, of course, the safety, the crime rate, what's sure. around there, is there co-op housing, is there no co-op housing, all those factors come into play and that depends on what your, you know, what your base for it is. Like, I had kids, so I had to get uh, an area that had a really good school. I was not able to move, like I wasn't even considering options that didn't have great school ratings. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that, you do your research, you figure out you know, your commute time, the area, the people in the area, the amenities in the area. Amenities are very important. You wanna have the amenities you know, close by, close by. Uh, so that's very easy. Nowadays, there's lots of websites that allow you to go on and you can actually figure out um, so much about an area just by going online five minutes here and there and you could know about the area and then definitely take a drive out there but not yeah. in bad weather <laughs> yeah. don't go in the snowstorm or in a gray cloudy you know pick a good day and mm -hmm. go 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 out in good spirits and check out the area and see if this is where you could see yourself living i mean when i came to innisville i didn't even know innisville existed and seeing yeah. the beautiful lake simcoe and how lovely the beach town was, I fell in love instantly. Mm -hmm. And can first time home owners uh, borrow from the RSPs? Uh, so that's a great question for a mortgage broker. Yes, uh, they definitely can. Um, how it works is I would advise everybody who has questions on how to get a down payment or how to get a bigger you know, deposit sum for your purchase, discuss it with your broker, your financial advisor. They will lead you the right way. The first step to doing anything, you know, of course you do your research, yes, but Above and beyond, you have to have a broker. You have to have somebody that's going to do this for you, that's going to tell you, look, this is what you have to do and this is how you have to do it. Because mm -hmm. other, otherwise, you wouldn't be you know, in this situation. You'd be buying, right? So people have to know what they're capable of financially before they even think about you know, going into the deal. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. I think it was very informative. So thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for watching. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as through iPhone and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.